So you wanna be an Instagram artist. Or maybe you don't, but I know that if you're on this video, you've probably thought about it before. That or you just feel sad for me and you want me to get some of my ad revenue. Life is tough out here. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about what it's like to be a social media artist, at least from my perspective. Because I know when I started on social media and even now, there's not a whole lot of people talking about working this way as a job. So uh, I want to give you guys some insight into living life as a social media artist, some tips and pointers here and there so that you guys, for those of you who might be considering this as a possibility in the future, uh, know exactly what you're getting into. Now, from person to person, your experiences are going to be very different. This is just my experience so far being a social media artist. And for the little babies out there who might be considering something like this as a future career, I hope this uh, helps you see your path a little bit clearer. So there are a few main points that I want to talk about in this video, such as artistic freedom, being your own boss and managing your own time, as well as making money online to support yourself. But before we jump into that, we have a sponsor. <laughs> Big thank you to the sponsors of this video, Wondershare Filmora 10, which is a video editing software that is powerful and easy to use. I had the chance to try out the Mac version of Wondershare Filmora 10. The download and setup was super easy and fast. Once you import your footage into the program, you have access to a wide range of audio tracks, titles, transitions, and special effects that you can use to make your videos really stand out. It also comes with all the basic features, such as cutting and layering your video and audio tracks. It has a really cool new feature called AI Portrait. This feature automatically tracks the movement of your subject in a video frame and applies a range of different effects. For example, the human border effect here basically allows me to create a super easy and fast YouTube thumbnail in a video frame. For Mac users, it also comes with a stock media feature which allows you to download files directly from Jiffy, Pixabay, or Unsplash. And if you're using any stock images in your videos, this helps you streamline your editing process. The app is free to try, but also offers paid versions. So if you guys are interested, I'm gonna link it in the description below. Be sure to check it out. Feel free to download it and play around and see what kind of videos you can make on it. Thank you once again to Wondershare for more attend for sponsoring this video. Now back to what we were talking about. I know. Like who in the right mind would sponsor me? So the first point we're gonna talk about is artistic freedom. From my experience uh, posting on social media, creating all this content for you guys, I think I got a pretty good insight into uh, just how much creative freedom you actually have on social media. And I think there is a very common misconception that if you're a social media artist, you can draw whatever you want. No, you can't. You can't. Yeah. Here's the thing, okay, when you first start on social media, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can try to look for a niche, look for a style, find things that you are passionate about and that you like drawing. And you can really experiment. But when you attract a certain number of audience, there comes a point where you just cannot do a full 180 and change your art style without alienating the people who are already there and supporting you. I mean, you technically always have the choice to be able to do something completely different. It's up to you but you also have to consider the consequences of that. Because let's say you're a person who posts a lot of funny comics, and now all of a sudden you decide to post a photorealistic rendered portrait. People are gonna be like, well, this is not what I signed up for. And your follower count is gonna drop. <laughs> so there are always consequences to your actions when you get to a certain size, and it's not always complete creative freedom being a social media artist, whether it's on Instagram or Twitter or whatever art station, DeviantArt, whatever platforms that you use. Now, when I first started, I was doing a lot of fan art, a lot of pieces that were based on characters that are very well known because I figured that was probably the best way for me and my work to reach more people. Nobody really knows about me, but they know about these characters. And I was able to get to like 10,000 followers, but I found throughout that process, I was kind of limiting myself to just drawing these things that sometimes I'm not even super passionate about. So I decided, you know what, screw it. I'm going to just draw whatever scenes that I want to draw and uh, whatever characters that I want to draw. And now here you have my Instagram page and I'm pretty sure all the first 10,000 followers that I got uh, have unfollowed me since then. I don't think that's what they signed up for, but I'm very glad that I did that complete 180 relatively early on. So it's not complete artistic freedom. It's more like self-censorship, but if you pick a theme or subjects or whatever it is that's enjoyable to you, you're gonna have a pretty good time. Now, with that being said, when you compare your artistic freedom, your creative freedom to uh, the amount of freedom that you have when you're working with a client, uh, it's completely night and day because you can kind of be your own boss here. You can kind of set your own rules and do your own thing. But with a client, you're always going to get things that you might not really agree with, but you just kind of have to go along with it because they're paying you. Recently, I've worked with this amazing client on a really cool project and they gave me a lot of 
creative freedom. But at the same time, you know, I still felt like I was being restricted by the scope of the project. It's not something that is, you know, as intimately mine as my social media stuff. Speaking of freedom, this is our perfect transition into the next topic, which is your own schedule. You have to be your own boss when you are a social media artist. There's nobody out there telling you what to do, how much you gotta post, how much you gotta work, you gotta do all this yourself. And being able to set your own schedule doesn't mean that your schedule is gonna be more chill than your friends who are working nine to fives. That's because you literally have to be your own boss. You have to hold yourself accountable. You have to be responsible for everything that you have to do. You gotta have your checklist. You gotta maintain a schedule and you gotta always make sure that you're on top and you gotta always make sure that you're on top of that schedule. What's great about this is you can say tomorrow I'm gonna take the day off and I'm gonna catch up on my work later on in the week. But there is also a downside to this and that is it's hard to separate your work from your personal life. I know this is especially difficult for us artists because with art, it's something that you enjoy doing, something that you actually like to do. So when you're working or when you're drawing something for a client, it might not even feel like work. But you know, working for yourself means that you have to set time aside so you can do other things, you know, go out for a run, go to the gym, go hang out with your friends, play some games, you know, do other things outside of your work. As much as it might not feel like work, it's still going to be your work. And when you see videos like Ross Draws, you know, working like a 14 hour day, like that's something that you could very easily fall into as an artist because you just want to draw you know you want you want to you like doing it it you can't help it sometimes you know sometimes i sit down at like 11 p.m and i start a drawing <laughs> when you're working as a full-time social media artist you're gonna be thinking about it like pretty much all the time like my mind is thinking about my work even when i'm chilling during my personal time that's just how it is uh it's very hard to separate the two because there's a lot of passion involved in the actual work itself. It's not like you can clock out at 5 p.m. and just say, I'm gonna go home now and not think about work whatsoever and play some video games. It just doesn't work like that. And while we're talking about the schedule, let's transition to point number three. And that is a very common misconception that this is not an actual job. It very much is. If you wanna become a social media artist, you wanna work online and you wanna make money online, it takes a lot of management. You're not gonna be able to just goof around and make a living at the same time. For example, I set a schedule for myself on Instagram to post every three days. So that's one of the platforms that I'm managing. And on top of that, I'm doing Patreon, which is where I share behind the scenes process videos, where I make custom tutorial videos, as well as custom wallpapers and things like that. And then on top of that, there's YouTube where I try to upload weekly. So that means I gotta do a video shoot every single week. I gotta come up with a video idea every single week and I gotta edit that video every single week. And then there are some low maintenance things like Gumroad, Imprint, where I sell my prints and digital files. And then on top of all of that, I'm working on plans to release merch, working on plans to release books eventually and working on plans for other big future projects. So there's a lot happening. As a social media artist, you really have to take charge of everything that is in front of you and you have to manage multiple different channels so that you can have different sources of income that could support your living. So this whole thing is very much a full-time job and then some. I think I'm busier than most of my friends who I know with a nine to five job and that's just the nature of this line of work. So that's something that you have to be ready for if you're considering a full-time career on social media. But here's the thing, okay? You don't have to do this full-time. There are other artists out there who do this on the side and they have a main job. So for example, just off the top of my head, we've got Ilya Kuvshinov who works as a professional artist and manages Instagram and Patreon on the side, as well as Snatty who opened his own studio and is an art director there, but he also maintains a social media presence and sells books online. And then contrasting that, you've got people like me, like Ross Draws, people like Ergo Josh, who just, we make content for social media and we live off of the revenue that we get from social media exclusively. And these are all very different paths. If you choose the full social media path, you have to be aware of how much management you have to do, how much you have to really just put yourself out there. And uh, you have to be ready for the fact that your work and your life are not gonna be super separate. But if you're somebody like a snatty or even lowish, you're gonna be able to have a full-time job, but also use social media to get potentially more jobs in the future and potentially more income on the side. And I think for a lot of these professional artists who are in the industry, having this outlet on social media allows them to explore things that they are truly passionate about. It allows them to take a step back from their actual professional work and just work on things that it might be personal projects, passion projects, and things that 
actually genuinely interest them. And even if you're just a hobbyist, you can have a small social media presence, but still get a lot of commission work just from being out there. So I think overall, there's a lot of benefits to uh, incorporating social media somewhere in your career path or choosing it as your own career path. Like I have, like Ross Dross has, like Ergo Josh, like all these other amazing social media artists. It's a really new profession. There's just not a whole lot of information out there, especially for the little art babies who are growing up in this world and conserving all the different career options. And social media artist is a very viable career option. And if hearing all of this makes you very excited, maybe you have a future as a social media artist. And I think there's a lot of misconception about this career path, about it not being an actual job just because it's so new. Nobody can really comfortably say, you know, I've been in the social media industry for the past 30 years because it hasn't really existed for that long. Unlike, you know, the animation industry, the concept art stuff, you know, it's been around for a while and it's very legitimized, but social media, not so much. So I think that's it for this video. Honestly, this is the dream job for me. This is the best place that I think I could possibly be in. So I would never take this for granted, and, you know, because I know myself and I know that I hate when other people tell me what to do. So, you know, I wouldn't have a good time working under a boss, <laughs> but this is perfect. And if you want to shoot for something like this in the future, I encourage you with all my heart, because if you don't take that opportunity, you might regret it in the future. And that's one of the big reasons why I decided to jump on this thing to at least give it a try, give it my all so that in the future I have no regrets and I can say that I did give it a try, you know, and even if it didn't work out, at least I gave it a try. But yeah, when I was starting out, I think I would have really liked to have something like this online, to have been able to watch a video like this so that I kind of know what I'm getting into, you know, so that I can kind of get excited about uh, potentially doing this in the future. But I guess that's what I'm here for now. This is the stuff that I want to share with you guys about being a social media artist, being an Instagram artist. Maybe this is something that is actually going to interest you. This is something that's actually here. It's real. You can make money. You can make a living off of this. Like. It's amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And thank you once again to the sponsors for this video. If you guys want to check out Wondershare for more 10, I'm going to leave a link below so that you guys can try out the free version and see whether or not you like it. You can make some cool YouTube videos on it and kickstart your social media career. That's about it. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys and I'll see you guys on the next video. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Say hello to my pineapple light. We're bringing it back. I saw one of my patrons on Patreon say that they missed my pineapple light a while ago. So uh, it's, it's back. We got some crazy lighting here. Guys, Sony A6600. Look at this autofocus. That's crazy.